On the one hand, Socrates argued that morality really exists and that we can judge human actions against an unchanging and objective standard. But then we have Thrasymachus, who disagreed, and he argued that morality is just a human creation. It's made up. Who is right? Socrates or Thrasymachus? Is morality real or made up? Is morality about fact or opinion? Objective or subjective? These are the sorts of questions asked in Metaethics. This is a video tutorial introducing Metaethics for A-level students. What we have just seen is one of the earliest recorded discussions on Metaethics that can be found in Plato's Republic. This is the kind of contextual information you can use in assessments when you unpack what Metaethics is. As is often the case, we can trace it back to the ancient Greeks. So, what is metaethics and what are the two main positions in this area of philosophy? Metaethics is one of the three main branches of moral philosophy. We have applied ethics, normative ethics, and then metaethics. Meta means beyond or behind. So, what is the study of what is behind ethics? Well, it's the deepest level questions we can ask about morality. Metaethics is about the nature of ethical language itself. These three branches layer on top of each other. In fact, whenever someone makes a moral claim about a specific issue in applied ethics, they're also taking, whether they know it or not, a position in normative and metaethics. This is what makes metaethics so interesting, as it is the deepest level. It examines the most fundamental assumptions we have about the nature of morality. Everything else is built on top of it. As we will see, we can map all norms of ethical theories, so utilitarianism, natural moral law, Kantian ethics, somewhere in metaethics. In fact, we're going to explore this whole unit in the form of a map. It makes it more visual and it helps us remember what would otherwise be a lot of different ideas and positions. You'll want to be able to draw this from memory, but don't worry, not yet. First, just have a look. Is there any terms that you recognise? Hopefully you notice some of the normative ethical theories that you've maybe studied already. Now, these represent the main positions in metaethics that you should know. Some might not be necessary for you, depending which specification you do, so check yourself. But just because something isn't on your spec doesn't mean you can't mention it to show off knowledge. But they shouldn't form the main part of your answer in the exam. The most important information for most specifications are these areas. So let's start by unpacking the two main sides in metaethics, which are cognitivism and non-cognitivism. These are terms students tend to get muddled with, but we really want to know these as some exam questions can ask you to evaluate which side is more successful. I'll give you two ways to remember them and you choose the way that works best for you. The simple way of remembering is that cognitivism is the belief that moral language is meaningful. Non-cognitivism is the belief that moral language is meaningless. If this is all you can remember, then that's what you want to state in your exam answers. In fact, if an exam question were to ask you to evaluate the view that moral language is meaningless, they're asking you to evaluate non-cognitivism. So this is a good and straightforward way to understand these terms. However, a more complicated definition, one that lets you show off a little bit more, involves the word proposition. Hopefully you've come across this word before. Remember, a proposition is a statement that makes a claim about something that can be true or false. Okay, so how does this link to our new terms? Well, cognitivists think moral statements are propositions, so they can be true or false. Non-cognitivists think moral statements are not propositions, so cannot be true or false. Where students get confused is that non-cognitivism is not the same as saying moral statements are false. They're saying moral statements are meaningless, not false. When we utter a moral statement, we do not say something capable of being true or false, according to non-cognitivism. Anyone who thinks moral statements can be true or false is on the same side, and that's cognitivism. Another way of saying this is that cognitivists think moral statements are truth apt. Non-cognitivism think moral statements are not truth apt, cannot be true or false. Or what we said in our simple definition, meaningless. Non-cognitivism will make more sense when we look at specific examples, like emotivism, that claims moral language is just an expression of emotion. 
So don't worry too much about the details at this stage, but try to lock down this definition. So let's review our definition. Cognitivism means moral language is meaningful. Moral statements are propositions, so they can be true or false. They're truth apt. Non-cognitivism is the position that moral language is meaningless. Moral statements are not propositions. They cannot be true or false. They're not truth apt. Have you understood so far? Pause and complete before going on to the next video.